All right, welcome back on Facebook. Hey, this is Michael M. Hotep, founder of the African History Network, host of the African History Network show. Hey, you li you're listening and watching to the African History Network show. We are back. Uh, we're broadcasting on the Blog Talk Radio Network, uh, our Blog Talk Radio channel, blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show blogtalkradio.com forward slash the African History Network show. And we're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. We're broadcasting on our Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network as okay, well. Okay, so you may yeah. have heard um, about this, about a new uh, proposed TV series called Confederate. It's called Confederate. Now, it's from the creators of of the uh hbo series game of thrones game of thrones and i've never seen that show before i've heard of it never seen the show before all right but it's from creators david ben uh, uh benioff and db wise db wise okay and the uh it, so it's from these creators but also uh the produce two of the producers on the show are two african americans Michelle Tramble Spellman and Malcolm Spellman, okay, husband and wife team. And since this story has come out, they have all been getting backlash behind this idiotic idea, all right? So the uh, AtlantaBlackStar.com had an article from July 20th, 2017, Game of Thrones creators to develop series about an America where slavery was never abolished. Game of Thrones creator to uh, create a series about an America where slavery was never abolished. And in the article, it says, as Game of Thrones enters its seventh and final season, the creators have set their sights on a new series about an America where slavery still exists and many are riled up about it. Okay. Uh, David Benioff and DB wise are developing the HBO series Confederate, which depicts an alternate American history where the South successfully succeeded from the union leading to the third civil war. Okay, leading to the third civil war in doing so, quote, a nation in which slavery remains legal and has evolved into a modern institution, end quote. Uh, and this is uh, this is according to a press release from Wednesday, July 19th, 2017. All right. Now, this is in the era of Donald Trump. Well, we've seen a rise in white supremacy. Well, we've seen a drastic rise in hate crimes among African Americans, Hispanics, um, uh, Muslims, Arabs, different things like this, right? During Donald Trump's campaign, outside of his, um, a lot of his rallies, you would see people with confederate flag confederate battle flag memorabilia because what people think is the confederate flag is not really the confederate flag it's the confederate battle flag okay it's the confederate battle flag of northern virginia under general robert e lee's uh, under general robert e lee's command what people think is the confederate flag never flew over the confederate states of america there are three flags that flew over the Confederate States of America from 1861 to 1865. That flag is never one of them. OK, that flag that you see on top of the General Lee car uh, that you see people have on belt buckles on the back of pickup trucks, that flag never flew over the Confederate States of America. OK, so it's important for people to understand this history. So. Uh, according to the article from AtlantaBlackStar.com and according to the press release from July 19, 2017, the story follows a broad swath of characters on both sides of the Mason-Dixon demilitar demilitarized zone. Freedom fighters, slave hunters, politicians, abolitionists, journalists, the executives of a slaveholding conglomerate, uh, and the families of people in the in the thrall in their thrall okay now the drama which will begin production 
uh, after uh, Goatee, uh, after a Game of Thrones uh, wraps up in 2018, was originally going to be a feature film, but the creators of Games of Thrones, Game of Thrones, decided HBO was a better avenue to tell the story. Okay, so when this news came out, you know, so uh, black Twitter and social media uh, struck back and said, this is not a good idea. So you had comments on social media. You had some people saying HBO new series, HBO's new series, Confederate uh, is nope, 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 whole lot of nope. Um, you had somebody else uh, said, uh, like, even if Confederate is critical of current day racism do we need another series about the suffering of people of color written by white men okay now you have some um two african americans involved in this nonsense as well okay and i'm going to show you this article here because i don't want you to think i'm making this up okay and name of the article game of thrones creators to develop series about uh, an America where slavery was never abolished. Okay. This is from AtlantaBlackStar.com. Very, very good news source in AtlantaBlackStar.com. Okay. All right. Now, we look at some of the social media comments. Uh, Zora Neil Hustlin <laughs> on Twitter said the fandom uh, for the new HBO show, Confederate, is going to be tragic. Can you imagine? Um, can you can you imagine how much harm imagery, how, how much harmful imagery they're going to produce? Okay, the fandom for the new HBO show Confederate is going to be tragic. Can you imagine how much harmful imagery imagery they're going uh, they're going to produce? Um, Lexi Alexander, uh, Lex, Lexi Alexander said, eighty percent of my timeline is pissed off that HBO. Uh, about the HBO Confederate show. Um, okay, so you have these different types of comments, right? And I've done, I, I did a present, I did a, uh, uh, a presentation when we talked about the TV show Underground being canceled. And I talked about the problem with slave movies and slave themed TV shows. The problem with slave movies and the slave themed TV shows and how it reinforces this 1619 myth the myth that uh, the history of African-Americans started in this country, August 20th, 1619. OK, and how it locks us into that history. But also it can be very traumatic to see these, uh, especially for a uh, TV show and to see us each week running for our lives and being dehumanized and beaten and killed, different things like this at the hands of white supremacy. Also, if you want to make a documentary about slavery, OK, I understand that a weekly TV show. No, a weekly TV show. Absolutely not. OK, um, so if we look at the article from uh, Game of Thrones, uh, if you look at the article from uh, July 21st, 2017, OK, um, from the root dot com Game of Thrones creator on Confederate series, we, we, we might mess up but we haven't yet. Okay. And, uh, so check out this article also. All right. So in the article, they talk about the African-American couple that is, uh, involved in this project also. Okay. And you have Nichelle Tramble Spellman and Malcolm Spellman. They were interviewed by vulture.com about the backlash that they have received and the producers have received uh, and the and the creators, I should say, the creators of this project have received as well. And um, Nichelle and, and, and Melman, who are African-American, they indicated that no scripts have been written yet. However, I guess that's a that's a good thing. OK, that's a good thing. No scripts have been written yet. So. Um, David Benioff, one of the uh, co-creators of Game of Thrones, said so everything is brand new and nothing has been written. I guess that's what uh, I guess that was that's what was a little bit surprising about some of this outrage. It's just a little premature. 
uh, you know, we might F it up, but we haven't yet. Well, you already F it up when you come out with this type of uh, even idea. OK, come up with an idea that says, what if Adolf hit? What if Germany won World War Two and Adolf Hitler did not die and Jews were still in internment camps? Or what if, uh, uh, you know, it could come, it come, Jews were still in concentration camps? Could come out with a project like that and see what happens. See, they would never come up. They would never come up with something like that. So the article from um, Yasha Callahan from July 21st from um, the root.com, she says, not sure why outrage would be a surprise. Uh, she says people are allowed to voice their opinions about whether to show support or outrage. And just because you have fans for one show doesn't mean you're beyond reproach. OK, but see, in my opinion, to even entertain doing a, t a weekly TV show about something like this shows an insensitivity to African-American history and actually what happened to us. And it's even insulting to have African-Americans even involved in something like this. OK, so in a video posted on her Twitter feed, journalist and the root uh, dot com contributor Rebecca Theodore Vashon expressed what many Game of Thrones fans seem to feel about the news. She said, y'all are good with dragons. Uh, y'all good with magic when it comes to black people. No, I do not trust you. OK, because I have a real problem with, uh, you know, oftentimes other people telling our stories. So interesting enough, both both of the Spellmans, Michelle Tramble Spellman and Malcolm Spellman, deleted their Twitter accounts once they received backlash behind the news of this project. But they say they are black creatives and they understand the concerns. Now, Michelle Tramble Spellman said, I, I do understand their concern. I wish their concern had been reserved to the night of the premiere on HBO on a uh, on a Sunday night when they watched and then they made a decision after they watched an hour of television as to whether or not we succeeded in what we set out to do. Well, when you have something that's an idea this bad, you need to nip this in the bud. When you have something that's an idea this bad, you need to nip this in the bud. You don't even want this to get into production. You don't even want this to get into production. And this is at a, this is at a time when you have Republicans consistently trying to strip away voting rights of African-Americans. You have Republicans trying to do everything they can to put us as close back as a whole into some type of slavery. You have Donald Trump and his administration reversing policy after policy after policy that President Obama put in place. And many of those policies were actually beneficial to African-Americans. Most of us don't know this because we don't study politics and we don't study policy. Most of our people don't know that the U.S. prison population is the lowest it's been in 20 years. It's down to 1.53 million, largely because of policies from President Obama and his Department of Justice that backed off of because he directed his Department of Justice, first under Attorney General Eric Holder, then under uh, Attorney General Loretta Lynch, not to charge low level nonviolent drug, uh, 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 not to charge low level nonviolent drug offenders with the harshest, longest sentences. OK. And then also because states started prescribing a lot of um, uh, treatment uh, for uh, drug addicts and things like this over incarceration, the U S prison population has dropped to as low as 0.20 years. It, it, it went from 2.3 million, a peak of about 2.3 million down to 1.53 million. Newsweek.com had an article about this. Most of our people don't know this. Newsweek.com had an article about this. And, uh, I read the department of justice, uh, report from December, uh, 2016 that talked about this. Okay. And the name of the article from um, Newsweek 
we'll post a, a link here on the thread of the Facebook broadcast. You can read this because I think in the article they have a link to the um, they have a link to the um, report from the Department of Justice. OK, U.S. prison population uh, exceeded one and a half million in 2015. OK, so you could check out this article. We'll post the link here on the thread of the broadcast. But there are a lot of policies that President Obama actually had in place that many of us didn't even know existed existed because a lot of us don't read, don't pay attention to politics, even though politics impacts every aspect of your life. OK, so then you don't know. Since, since you don't know what happened over the past eight years, you don't know what policies to try to maintain. You don't understand how any of these policies benefited you, impacted you. OK, I also encourage people to read the document from um, the Washington, uh, read the document from the Congressional Black Caucus called uh, What Did Trump Do? What Did Trump Do? OK. You can download this from cbc.house.gov, cbc.house.gov. You can also download this from our website, africanhistorynetwork.com. We, we have it right on the homepage. And this deals with the first 100 days of the Donald Trump administration. And it deals with how policies that Trump is putting in place and a reversal of policies of President Obama that Trump is doing, how these are negatively impacting the African-American community. This is showing a direct correlation between policies and laws and the impact, the negative impact it has on the African-American community. OK, this deals with the first 100 days of the Donald Trump administration It's called What Did Trump Do? What Did Trump Do? You can download that from our website, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. It's right on the homepage. Or you can go to cbc.house.gov, cbc.house.gov, okay? And that's in cbc.house.gov, that's the website of the Congressional Black Caucus. And, it, and you can look up each Congressional Black Caucus member. You can find out what policies they are supporting, what, what bills they voted for, all different types of things like this at cbc.house.gov. So usually when I hear people say, oh, the Congressional Black Caucus doesn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. I ask them, have you been to cbc.house.gov and looked at what the members of the Congressional Black Caucus are doing? Or have you been there to look and see what your member of the Congressional Black Caucus are doing? And 99.9% of the time, if not 100% of the time, the answer is no. Interesting. I just find that I just find that mind boggling. You know. If you, you know. If you want to know what they're doing, go to cbc.house.gov. You can find out. Okay, so when we look at this um, debacle of an idea for a TV show called Confederate, now this is really going to appeal to a lot of Donald Trump supporters. Oh, this is going to be a huge show down in the South. This would be a huge show down in the South because keep in mind the South was bitter for losing the Civil War. The South was bitter for losing the Civil War. So, um, the so both of the Selmans quickly deleted their Twitter accounts once they recognized the backlash. But they say uh, that as Black creators, they understand the concerns. Okay, so um, you have uh, one of them who said uh, the concern is real. Uh, uh, this is. Um, uh, Nichelle, Nichelle Trample Spellman. She said, uh, the concern is real, uh, but I think that the four of us are very thoughtful, very serious and, and, and not flip out and not flip about and not flip about what we are getting into anyway. What I've done in the past, what Malcolm has done in the past, uh, what the DBs, uh, uh, have done in the past proves that. So I would have loved an opportunity for the conversation to start once the show was on the air. Did you consult with Afri any African American historians about whether this was a good idea? Did you talk to Dr. Gerald Horn? Did you talk to Dr. Leonard Jeffries or Professor James Small or Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene? Did you talk to any African American historians to ask the question, you know, you think this is a really good idea, especially in this climate, especially in this political climate with Donald Trump? 
who has as his chief strategist a white supremacist, white nationalist named Stephen K. Bannon, who was the co-founder of Breitbart.com, who Stephen K. Bannon said is the home of the alt-right. And you have a, legitimiz a, a legitimization, a, leg a legitimization of the alt-right now with Breitbart, okay? And you have uh, a legitimization of Infowars and these other right-wing uh, types of news outlets. Did you, I mean, who did you consult with on this? I don't know them. They may be nice people, but uh, they don't seem too bright. I'm just saying. Um, so Malcolm Spellman said, you cannot litigate this on Twitter. It's not possible. I don't know that we can change anyone's mind. But what people have to understand is that uh, what people have to understand is, and what we are obligated to repeat in every interview is, we've got black aunties, we've got black nephews, uncles, black parents, and, bl and black grandparents. We deal with them every single day, okay? I wonder what their response was. And I wonder how much they know about our history. But still, I wanna know, did you consult with any African-American historians on this? You know? And um, like African centered African American historians, also. I don't mean Dr. Henry Lewis skipped the truth gates, I ain't talking about him. I mean, you, I mean, some African centered African American historians. So, Malcolm Spellman goes on to say, We deal with the struggle every single day, and people don't have to get on board with what we're doing based on a press release. But when they're writing about us and commenting about us, they should be mindful of the fact that there are no sellouts involved in this show. Uh, me and Nichelle are going uh, are not uh, props being uh, used to protect someone else. We are people who feel a need to address issues the same way they do. And they should at least humanize the other end of those tweets and articles. You may want to think this through before you jump on board something like this, especially with white people. I'm just saying. So people are still so Yasha Callahan goes on to say in the article from the root.com, people are still scratching their heads over the concept of the show, especially at a time when relics of the Confederacy are now being taken down in the South. And it's not as if. Uh, we're finally living in a post-racial society. So in New Orleans, they took down four Confederate statues. Okay, Mayor Mitch Landrieu uh, was in, was interviewed on MSNBC, interviewed on News One. Now they took down four Confederate statues. You have in Mississippi, they're trying to take, they're trying to um, get the Mississippi state flag um, remade, redesigned because it has the um confederate battle flag in it okay you had south carolina behind the killing of the nine african americans at mother emmanuel african methodist episcopal church that had to pass uh the state legislature with a two-third majority vote a bill to take down the confederate battle flag off of the state's capital that just happened a couple years ago so you have all this going, I think it was 2015, late 2015. You have all this going on, and then you have people talking about having a weekly TV show about what would America be like if the South won the Civil War and slavery was still intact and this leads to a third Civil War. It's just a bad idea all the way around. It's a, it's a bad idea all the way around. OK. So check out this article from um, the root dot com Game of Thrones creator on Confederate series. We might mess up, but we haven't yet. Yeah, you already messed up. You already messed up with some nonsense like that. OK. And uh, they should also consult with Dr. Joy DeGruy, who wrote the book post-traumatic slave syndrome post-traumatic slave syndrome okay also talk to that sister as well dr joy degru who wrote post-traumatic slave syndrome go to her website 
joydegru.com, D-E-G-R-U-Y, D-E-G-G-R-U-Y, joydegru.com. You can order the book. I think you can order it there, if not Amazon. Or you, well, first, check your local African-American bookseller. Get um, uh, Michelle and Malcolm, if you know them, get them a copy of this book also, okay? But that's one of the books we use in our online course, Ancient Kemet, the Moors, and the Ma'afa. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school. Understanding the transatlantic slave trade, what they didn't teach you in school also. Okay. All right. Um, so you listen to the African History Network show. Um, broadcast on the Blog Talk Radio Network, our Blog Talk Radio channel. Uh, the African History Network show. The African History Network show on Blog Talk. We have our shows podcasted there as well. Okay. So we have almost 800 uh, podcasted episodes there. You can check that out. And we're broadcasting on um, Facebook, uh, Facebook fan page, The African History Network, The African History Network. So share this broadcast on your own Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. Share this broadcast on your own Facebook page. Invite your friends to tune in also. 